FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's February 7th, 2018. Well, New Year always brings new frauds with it, whether it's cryptocurrency frauds or Ponzi schemes, you name it. The scamsters, the fraudsters, they're always at work. And here with us now is Heather Wagenhals of UnlockYourWealthRadio.com, fraud expert and much more. Heather, welcome back. It's been a while. It has, and I'm so glad to be back for the new year because we've got new things to be worrying about. Hey, and one thing I forgot to mention, be part of the show. You got a question for Heather and myself, email us at kl at com. So it's a new year and there's a new bumper crop of scams out. I've been getting emails. They just think that they can trust me with tens of millions of people's money and everything's going to be fine. They probably want me to send them some money, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen real fast. Uh, but uh, what's, uh, you gotta what's going You got to pay the wire on? fees, Carrie. You got to pay the wire fees if you want that kind of money. Oh, I forgot about that. The wire <laughs> fees. Ooh, yeah. I forgot the wire fees. So, yeah. so these scammers, like they just never give up, do they? No. And so we have a new update on an old scam. And then we have a totally brand new one that the Internet Crime Complaints Division of the FBI has just released. It started last year, but it's gaining momentum. So we need to talk about that, too. So those are the two big ones for today. But have you ever bought or sold a car online? No. I've never done so it. I, I've done small things like scooters, you know, and, and one of my new favorite emerging marketplaces of all places, uh, w- within hours, I sold these um, electric motorized scooters oh, I love them, on yeah. Facebook Marketplace. And it was so great, you know, but the guy that was messaging me, like I was worried about it being a scam. The guy that was messaging me was doing it through a lady's uh, profile on Facebook. And I was really concerned because I'm like, and he goes, well, you know, if you don't want to trust a 68 year old man and I'm like, then why is your name Phyllis? <laughs> yeah. Phyllis, that's like that one they had. The the guy is a, uh, he's in customer service in some place in Eastern Europe. It's a fake credit card. And he says, hi, this is Peggy. How can I help? And, you know, it's a guy, but his name is Peggy. Like, uh, you know, and then, uh, then they just basically hang up on the person. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this one worked out, you know, he was just, you know, they, it was gener- like an older couple and he was walking with a limp. So he wasn't going to steal my scooter or run off with it. But, you know, you just never know when you deal with online sales and online vehicle sales just between May of 2014 through December of this past year, there has been over 26,900 complaints. Really? Complaints. Almost almost 27,000 complaints with adjusted losses of $54 million. Just on cars? Well, how are they going to ship those cars to you anyway, Heather? Are they going to ship them by FedEx? Uh, you know, it just seems like something that... Yeah, yeah, you use transporters and, you know, yeah. my husband and I collect cars. So, you know, we buy and sell vehicles all the time and we hire transportation companies that have those cool rigs that they drive mm-hmm. it up on. I was like, I want to, I was like, I don't want to drive in case I fall off, but I do want to ride up and just check that out. Yeah. But, you know, so you, so you hire transportation companies and stuff, so there's a process for it, and these fraudsters are well aware of the process, and so they know the fees associated with doing this. And what they do is they advertise using photos, at, you know, that, that look like the car, you know, because they're not usually putting up VIN numbers. Mm-hmm. And they give an email and a, a phone number to call. And then, you know, the criminal sends the intended buyer more photos, a logical explanation for the discounted price and the time-sensitive nature of the transaction. You know, some things are like, I'm moving or I'm being deployed by the right. military. I can't take my car with me. You know, um, maybe it's part of a divorce settlement and it has to be cashed out. Or maybe it's uh, a relative that you inherited the car from when they passed away. And so it appears legitimate. You know, I mean, the, the, the reasons seem, you know, 
plausible. And then, you know, they want you to do it through a third party yeah, escrow, escrow company. And, yeah. you know, um, then, then they want you to get the prepaid cards to send me and then I'll ship you the car. Uh, and then I'll transfer the title and, oh, I'm having a little bit of problems. And then they just stop talking to you. Of course. You know, so the, the FBI recommends that if consumers are interested in purchasing items online, that they ensure that they are purchasing from a reputable source. They verify the legitimacy of the seller and that they are in actual possession of the merchandise. How do you so, do that, though, when the guy's like 2,000 miles away? You know what? We have technology with our smartphones. You can do a video call where the person can walk and inspect the car with you live. Oh. It's a little difficult to do that. You can actually have them photograph while they're standing there or focus in on the VIN number, which mm -hmm. you can do a search on through a variety of different sources on the Internet. You can just put it into any browser and it'll start pulling up resources for you to search that, whether it's accident claims, vehicle history, that sort of stuff. So yeah. there are ways to verify this, you know, and, it, and if it just seems suspicious, you know, is, is the car really worth that much money? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yep. I mean, I don't know that you're going to get, you know, a 2015 Mercedes for 500 bucks. Right. So if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Exactly. So right. we just need to be wary of that, you know, and now, um, you know, everybody's, all the new cars are coming out. So everybody wants to get the latest and greatest. So mm -hmm. we're all shopping and we all want to get a deal. You know, the millionaire next door built his, builds his wealth, if you recall the book, mm -hmm. by not buying new. So yeah. it makes sense to buy a resale car. And if you can get it on the internet, what the heck? The ultimate nice. marketplace. Yeah, well, I see your point. I do see your point, uh, and, you know, I'm sure you can get good deals on it, but, uh, you know, man, uh, it seems very risky uh, buying from right. an individual. You can wire him And if you don't know how to do it, you know, yeah. you can have somebody who is knowledgeable. You know, yeah. likely, you know, they say the average person knows 250 people. Somebody knows how to buy and sell cars online. Yeah, I'm sure of that. Well, so are you going to... Uh, how do you do it? Do you wire the funds or do you uh, do you make sure when somebody picks it up, they give the guy the check there, a certified check? You know, it all depends. So usually the, the way I have done it is that once my transportation company has picked up the car and verified the title, mm -hmm. um, as they load it, then I send the wire. Oh, okay. So you're not sending the money before you have the car. That's the key, correct? Right. Right. That's it's... the key. I mean, and that's the way I've always done it, you know, and, yeah. uh, um, or I find somebody or I'll go out and personally inspect it. You know, yeah. if, if you're going to spend like, especially on collector cars, you know, what is it, the cost of a plane flight to verify the car is a piece of crap <laughs> than to be a victim of a bait and switch scheme? I totally agree with you. Yeah. So somebody's got to look at it. Somebody's got to see it yeah. because it might not have an engine in it. Who the heck knows? Right. Yeah. I mean, and there are vehicle appraisers in every state that you can hire somebody to go inspect it for you. Yeah. I mean, I've done like lease swaps where somebody really wants out of their lease and they'll give you money to take it over, you know, and they have low mm -hmm. miles on the car and you wind up getting a car much cheaper than you could actually lease it for yourself. So, uh, but that's different because you're not buying it. You're not sending a bunch of money. They're actually paying like several months ahead for uh, rental payments, lease payments. So you're right. coming out ahead on the deal and you can always. And there no. are, there are companies now that do that for folks. Yeah. Yes. That, that will swap them out and that you make the payments to them and they'll forward the payment along to the correct place, you know? Exactly. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's simple to acquire a car. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I you know, I, I lend on cars and I had to repo a couple and I had them sold within hours. Somebody always really? needs a car. I mean, it's, yes. so, so you don't even necessarily need to use the internet, but if you are, I mean, cause it's the ultimate marketplace, how I'm able to find, you know, rare cars, you know, and, and specific models and makes and stuff when you're a collector that's, you know, it, it, it's the ultimate marketplace for that. You just, you know, buyer beware. Take your time, yeah. you know, and make sure that you get an inspection or go out and physically inspect it yourself if you know what you're doing, you know, so, so it's just buyer beware. Yeah. And always make sure they've got the goods before you turn the money over. So what other yeah. what other frauds we got going on here, Heather? So this is like the ultimate crazy fraud. And, you know, they just sent a public service announcement out about this a few days ago. And I cannot believe 
I guess I could believe, but I cannot believe that the media <laughs> hasn't jumped all over this. But since the FBI already has a boatload of problems, as you know, politically Do they? speaking. I wasn't they aware. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. a little. This one's kind of gotten swept under the carpet. So when you have a problem, if you've been defrauded, where are you supposed to go to file a complaint? Uh, where are you supposed to go? To the police station, to police department. Well, the police station, but also the FBI has yeah. an Internet Crime Complaint Center. Oh, the course, website yeah. is I C the number three, the numeral, mm-hmm. dot gov. IC3.gov. Okay. Yeah. So cyber scammers are now mock pretending, we're actually mock pretending is canceled itself yeah. out there, pretending to be the IC3. Really? And they're scamming folks out of their personal information. Oh my God. Isn't tell, that nuts? Tell me yes. it ain't so. Tell me it ain't so. And they're, they have three different ver- variations of the, the scam too. But essentially what they do is they send an email to you and they introduce themselves as the director in charge of compensation funds for oh, scam victims at God. the Internet Crime Complaint Center. The IC3. I mean, talk about bold and moxie these people have. So it says that your complaints have reached our office yeah. through various correspondence, blah, blah, blah. people blah, are blah. wretches. And oh my God. <laughs> this is the worst thing I've ever heard of. And, and yeah, so, so you're getting... I need you to verify the information you sent us. I need to confirm that we have found the person and they send links yeah. to people who have been convicted, you know, the, the news right. stories of, of folks being arrested for cyber crimes. It's not necessarily mm-hmm. your cyber crime, but they're sending these, you know, yeah, links so obviously. you can go kind of track it. And please contact us urgently. We need to confirm the information. And so they ask you for your name, the company, you know, your email address, phone numbers, websites that were used, everything that the, um, IC3 would legitimately ask for account names and numbers, financial yeah. institutions, all of that stuff. And then they'll, they'll and, get you again. And now, My God. Yeah. And so now they they have, they usually build a profile, you know, mm-hmm. and they can start now applying for credit in your name. They can start subverting your current credit card accounts because you've given them account information. And when you're stressed out, okay, this is exactly what we talk about on my biology-based approach to money management and success on Unlock Your Wealth Radio. It's that we already know not to disclose that, but once our physiology takes over and we're panicking, We can't use our logic, reasonable brain Mm -hmm. to think critically. And we just instinctively react to somebody that appears to be a a law enforcement official. Yeah. So we cough up the the goods. (laughs) That is incredible. I can't, I wish I could say I was surprised, but yeah, because you're panicked and you think this person has a solution. They're going to help you. Hi, we're from the government. We're here to help. And then it turns out (laughs) they're not even from the government. And didn't Reagan say that was the most dangerous thing? Yeah. The dangerous, uh, most dangerous 10 words in the English language. Hi, I'm from the government. I'm here to help. However many (laughs) words that is, but, uh, but it's even more dangerous in the hands of a nefarious uh, the government will do one thing, but criminals, uh, definitely the government has limits sometimes, but criminals know no limits, uh, Heather. So God, uh, I don't know what you do about it. Hey, well, we got to take off now, but tell us websites. I know unlockyourwealthradio.com, but you got another one, Twitter feed, all that. Tell us where we get you. Yes. Yeah, so you want me on Twitter, it's Heather Wags it, or Unlock YR Wealth. And then you can also find me for the latest on identity theft, frauds and scams and how to avoid it at moneycreditandyou.com. All right. Well, that's excellent. We'll have a link to those sites in the show notes of this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter. Email us, be part of the show, kl at kerrylutz.com, Twitter feed at Carrie Lutz, and the Facebook page is Financial Survival Network. I'm not selling cars on Facebook or, <laughs> or on eBay, so just keep that in mind when you write me. Heather, always a pleasure. We will talk to you again real soon. Make it a prosperous day. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.